No one can have an intelligent discussion about Ezekiel's vision without first understanding what the wheels are and what they represent. The wheels are a tremendous promise to us in the form of an incredible object lesson. It can be said that the beauty of the entire vision is in the wheels. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Uphaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. In Daniel 10, the prophet sees a vision of the Lord. Notice that his body is like the barrel, which is a green gemstone, and the voice of his words, which is that of the Holy Spirit, are said to be like the voice of a multitude. Clearly, his voice is his bride that has received the gift of the Spirit. This is a specific reference to the final proclamation of the gospel to all the world. The word of the Lord is the final revelation that will be God's last call to be saved. In Ezekiel's vision, the church is represented as the wheels of a chariot, which are made up of many thousands of faceted gemstones. The wheels of Beryl are an active, dynamic representation of what God's four faces will accomplish. Remember, the Gospels are the record of Israel's failure to see God's face. In Ezekiel, it's exactly the opposite. The fact that there are four wheels means the church is not just seeing, but experiencing all four Gospels as they work to fulfill each other. Their symbiosis is the marriage of the Lamb, the spinning of the wheels represents the work of the church as it will gain every victory where the old church failed to do so. The last day church will do the will of the Father as the Lord said, Thy will be done. That prayer is fulfilled in the promise of Ezekiel's vision, which is a representation of the kingdom of heaven. Ezekiel's vision is that of a moving vehicle. Its wheels are made of two basic parts, which are the wheel and its spokes. This diagram shows what the first aspect of the relationship is concerning the four faces. The straight arrows are the four spokes that support the wheel. The spokes are a dynamic relationship that exists between the two faces that see and thus fulfill each other. Seeing each other is the point because seeing is the connection made. The spokes are the most important part of the wheel since they quite literally support and strengthen the wheel. The law sees obedience as its complement, just as life sees grace as its complement. The spokes are the power of the wheel because they form its center or hub. We might say they maintain its balance, which makes it possible for the wheels to spin. The wheel itself is based on the same principle of seeing itself fulfilled. The light arrows show the motion of the wheel rotating counterclockwise. The wheels are a side-by-side -side relationship concerning the four faces, and that makes them behave differently. This is the other dynamic aspect of the four faces. The wheel's motion is created by the power of them seeking to fulfill each other selflessly. Like the three persons of the Trinity, each face only cares about the welfare of the other, which is the secret that explains why their motion is so powerful. Remember, 
the greater the sacrifice made, the more power that sacrifice will have, which will turn the wheel that much faster. Obedience is powerless without grace, because grace is the power God gives us to obey. Therefore, obedience seeks to fulfill itself by receiving the gift of God's grace. The one sees and moves toward the other. Likewise, grace must fulfill itself by giving to the believer its power, which is an understanding of the beauty and the necessity of the law, because the law is a harmony of forces that perpetuate life. The law finds its power in those that want to live, because life is the knowledge of God that he himself calls the I Am. God placed that knowledge in Adam, who was made in God's image and God's likeness. Life is the existence of the being, which is impossible without obedience, because obedience is life. Life finds its meaning and fulfillment in the other three faces, which requires the will of the soul to be sacrificed and surrender to God. That brings the motion of the wheel full circle to where it all started. That is the full gospel of these four faces that will be the final revelation of Jesus Christ. This image shows the four wheels in motion. Their motion causes the chariot to rotate at its center. The chariot spinning is in effect the motion of a whirlwind because it's the motion of a storm, or more specifically, a tornado or a hurricane. This is the storm that will come when the latter rain will begin to fall, because the deluge of that storm will be the flood of God's Holy Spirit. We understand that the coming of the Comforter marks the beginning of the end time period. The point of these four beasts rising up from the sea in the prophecy of Daniel 7 concerns the identity of God because four is the number that represents him as the revelation of God's plan. Daniel says Satan will counterfeit the final revelation of Christ and his four faces that are the final understanding of his true identity. That explains why Jesus warns us three times in Matthew 24 about Satan's last great deception. Three is always the number of God's identity as the Holy Trinity, while four is the number of the revelation of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Three plus four is seven which is the number of the book of sevens concerning the time of the end. The book of Revelation is the prophecy of the end and the world's last chance to receive Christ as one's personal savior. All of this points to the critical issue that will be Satan's final deception and what a potent and deadly deception it will prove to be.